Hello guys! In this video, I will show you the basics of the rock on. For those of you who have never heard about Rockclone, it is a modeling and layout plugin for 3ds Max that not only can speed up your workflow, but also make updating the objects way easier. I put the link to the plugin below the video, so check it out if you're interested to test it by yourself. Anyways, let's jump to 3ds Max. To use Rockclone, we need to go to the geometry panel, choose ITA software and add the Rockland object. You can also add the shortcut to the tool panel and create a Rockland from there. Anyways, here we have the main panel and we can choose the objects from the Rockland library. We have different categories. The railings section is in the interior folder. Let's choose this one for instance and import it to the scene. As Rockland works on the splines, we need to create one first. In this case, make sure all your vertices are set to corners, otherwise you will have some issues later on. Now go to the Base Objects tab, click None and choose the newly created spline. Here we go, we have the railing created. Now you can easily change, for example, the length of this by moving the vertices. It will be automatically adjusted according to the rules that are set up in the particular Rayclone style. Let me quickly show you what kind of displays we can use in Rayclone. So we can use a mesh display that will show us a full resolution geometry in the viewports. We can also choose boxes. Adaptive is a combination of modes. And finally, Points Cloud is a fast view mode that lets you see a 3D preview of the geometry in the form of points in the viewport. We can also adjust the shade by moving the slider. We can also choose to use the object color, which in our case is pink. Next, we can choose how we want to render the object. In general, it should be mesh, unless you want to render your raw clone as boxes. Here, you can limit the maximum number of segments or meshes faces. When this limit is reached, the plugin shows a warning message. Ok, now let's take a look at the parameters section that list adjustable parameters defined by the current style. So here, we have two parameters used that can be changed from this level. The first one is mirror, so we can choose in which direction the railing will be created. And by changing the post spacing value, we can easily determine what is the distance between the posts. Ok, first let me quickly show you how the process will look like if we model it in the common way. We'll need to model this top of the railing as one object. Similarly for the glass element. We'll probably model this post as one element and combine all the pieces together. However, it's not so great as when the client changes his mind and, for example, he wants the glass pieces to be smaller, there will be quite a lot to remodel and it takes time. Now let me show you why the rock clone is a better way to do so. To create a rock clone object, we need to have elements prepared and then we'll need to open the style editor. It's where the magic happens. We have two types of generators, linear and array. In this tutorial, we will focus on the first one. It is used to create linear structures along a path, so the railing would be a great example of that. Here we set up the general style, rules and limits. So first, we'll choose the object, in this case spline, and we'll plug it into the slot with the same name. Now we need to choose the spline we want to use as a path for our railing. The next thing we need to do is add the specific segment as a default. In our case, it will be the glass object. In the general tab, we can change the padding distance in four directions. I will increase the left value to 10 cm. So you can notice that we have the glass part of the railing set up with the distance in between equal to 10 cm. I would like to have an extra 10 cm added to the right. You can notice that we have a small piece at the end. 
At this moment, it is cut at the place where the line stops. We can easily change it. We need to go to the generator rules and change the mode from tile to adaptive that calculates the number of whole segments that would fit into a path section and then scales them all equally on the x-axis to fill the available space. Ok, next we will add another segment. This time it will be the post that we will plug into the evenly slot. Evenly segments are placed automatically at regular intervals. I will go back to the padding left and right equals zero. By the way, if you would like to know how you can use the raw clone plugin in exterior images, I'd like to invite you to check out our advanced exterior course. I put the link to the training in the corner and in the description below the video. Ok, let's go back to work. Now we'll add the spiders. To do this, I will use the Compose operator. Add the spider, then post and spider again. It's like creating the object for different segments. We need to mirror one of the spiders though. Let's use the mirror operator. We need the end of the glass piece here as well. So let's add this piece as a segment. Now we need to plug everything in a correct order. And in the end, we need to mirror the sides of the glass and plug it into the last slot. Actually, it should be the other way around. Now, the distance between the glass and the spider, as well as the spider and the post, is too big. We can use transform to fix this. We can adjust the override padding values to do so. Ok, now let's do the same with the other side. I will copy the transform segment and add it between the second object and compose operator. We have to flip the padding values. Awesome, now let's fix the alignment. In the general section, we have to change the Y and Z alignment to pivot. Do it for all the segments. This way, the position of the objects relative to each other will be the same as in the base model. Lastly, let's fix the alignment of the glass model. Great! Now let's add the first and the last post of the railing. Let's copy the compose segment and plug it into the start slot. We have to remove two first segments though. And that's it. Let's do the same for the last object. Let's set up the parameters. In the rules section, you can set up the size of the panels. We can set it up, so we can control it from the modified section of 3ds Max, as I showed you at the beginning of the video. Right click on the array and choose Export Parameters. Then choose Evenly and Evenly Distance. Now we have to add a numeric parameter. Change the type to Scene Units and rename it. As I promised, now we can edit the value here. Let's add another parameter this time for choosing the orientation. We can change it here. We have to export this parameter as we did before.
This time, choose the boolean type. Here it is. Now let's add the top part of the railing. I will copy the array and unplug all the segments. I will keep the spline and the parameters though. To keep it clean, I will move to the right hand side. I will add two new segments and pick objects from the scene. Here, we have to change the alignment as well. Now, I will show you how to add the corner segments. Let's add a Compose operator and plug it into the corner slot. I will add the end part of the glass to the first slot. We have a problem though. To fix this, go to the Rule panel and check the Bevel Corner option. Great, you can see that we have a gap here. Let's add another part. Now we have to add a gap, add a new segment. This time we won't pick any object from the scene and leave it empty. I will plug it into the middle slot. We have to set up the padding to create a gap. 4.5 cm is the size we need for this model. Awesome, now let's add a corner pole. Let's copy the array again and delete all the segments. Copy this Compose operator and plug it into the corner slot. Remove the glass parts though. And here is the final effect. You can easily move vertices and the model is adjusting. Pretty cool, isn't it? If you found this tutorial interesting and you would like to know how to use your clone in practice in specific visualizations, I'd like to invite you to check out our advanced exterior training. You'll learn how to use your clone in practice and much, much more. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye bye!